Hi, Jim. This is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for AskGM.com, and I will be analyzing your game today. So let's take a look. After the moves e4, c6, we have a classical Karakhan. This is all well known after knight c3, pawn takes, pawn takes, rather knight takes. Knight d7. So this is not as popular as the move bishop f5. This is the more sort of popular way to play, but I know that knight d7 has been played by Karpov among others, and this may be called the Karpov system. The idea here is you want to play knight gf6, and after knight takes, you recapture with the knight and have a very comfortable position. So your opponent plays bishop c4, knight f6, here white takes. I'm not so sure if this is the most precise move. Knight g5, I think, is more precise. And after e6, it's going to be quite difficult for black to get the bishop out. This may be much better for white than the game. So he two, knight takes, knight f3. This position is extremely important because I think with your next move, you will set the course of the game. And you play the move e6. On one hand, you are making the range of the bishop much smaller, setting up this wall of pawns. On the other hand, this is very anti karakhan type of move. Because the bishop is locked up. The whole point of the karakhan is to get that bishop outside the pawn chain. So I think e6 is a mistake. Bishop f5 is much better. And if white castles, e6. Bishop can go to e7, castles, black has no problems whatsoever. So another more very important point I want to say is that bishop g4 looks like a logical way to get the bishop out as well. But this is a terrible blunder. After a well-known sequence, bishop takes f7, knight e5, hitting this guy and the bishop fork, and white gets the piece back with dividends. So let's go back and e6. So I don't like e6, but it's a bit passive, locking the bishop up. White plays castles. And again, if you play e6, the logical move would be to play bishop e7 to not really have to worry about this pin. I think bishop d6 is sort of the continuation of the problems for black because after bishop g5, well, first he played rook e1 castles. After bishop g5, the problem here is the only way you can get rid of that bishop is to either play g5 like you did in the game, which is very much risky, exposing the king, or bishop e7, admitting your mistake and dropping back. If I were black, I would probably choose the latter move, bishop e7, and then little by little, maybe knight d5 or b6, bishop b7, c5, finish my development. You play g5, which is a very double-edged move, very risky move, I should say, which could put black's position in peril. Why? This king is exposed. The pawns are damaged. The only way to do this is to go backwards, but we know that pawns don't move back. So this sequence, I think, favors white. Good job trying to solve the problem of the bad bishop. Knight e5 is a very good move for white, bishop b7, and here he plays queen f3, which I think is a very logical idea, sacrifice on the pawn, the knight will be under attack, and you will be in trouble. So taking on d4 is basically bad, you have to protect the bishop. Now the sequence I think favors black, if he takes, bishop takes, you're going to get the d-pawn, again I think you're back in the game, so he plays logical move rook a to d1. And after C b5, bishop f1, we can conclude that white is better. Why? Because white has very simple position, nice central control, and black's king is weak. Your only trump is if you can get this bishop active, play c5, you're going to get back in the game. So queen is 7 good idea. c5, excellent idea. And knight c6, I think white is already starting to go wrong here. This trade, I think, favors you in the long run. And after rook takes b4, this is the right approach. 
the point here is you want to trade the c pawn why so that the knight will get the free outpost this is the goal and eventually this is what happens here black is doing much better than before we have the outpost but one thing you should be scared is the bishop together with the passed pawn two against one could be potentially dangerous for you so you have to be very much careful about trading the queens and getting those pawns wrong so rook d8 is a good idea knight d5 is fine and here you play very nice cementing move king g7 and everything's under control you don't have a single weakness every single piece and pawn is protected so good job getting out of a slightly inferior position so rook e4 logical idea white is trying to put more damage more attack on the pawn simple king f6 looks a little risky but honestly i don't see any problems with that b3 rook d6 is good rook a4 knight b6 everything is defended you're setting up a little trap if queen takes pawn the rook's hanging so he has to do this an ugly move but has some ideas behind it another idea here is queen c3 check trying to take advantage of the king but then after e5 you're more or less okay so let's keep going rook d7 defense king g6 everything's protected and i really love this move f5 the pawn structure is not as damaged as it used to be the king is quite safe guard is guarded against any check and honestly i don't see how white can create a passer so queen e5 rook d5 trying to get rid of that annoying queen rook back and here in your notation it said rook b7 which obviously is possible but that's not what happened in the game my assumption because white would have lost the queen because white's next move is bishop e2 so again i assume that you put the rook on c7 and not on b7 now king g7 back i like this move stopping any queen invasion and after the move rook a5 we've reached another critical moment of the game the right evaluation here is that black is not better because black's pieces are tied up defending the a pawn and defending the queen invasion on h8 and g8 so you should have been a little bit more careful and not play this super ambitious move e5 i don't like this at all instead simply controlling the d5 outpost good luck for him finding a plan you can also play g4 securing all the squares and honestly i don't see how white can make progress black is at least equal so e5 is a big big mistake because now you potentially allow counterplay and he plays excellent move g4 f4 and bishop d3 immediately seizing the opportunity to mount the bishop here you played knight c8 which is more or less a passive approach the logical continuation would have been to play e4 the problem is tactics after bishop takes queen takes he takes the rook with check and black is just lost so if you have to play a move like knight c8 clearly something has gone terribly wrong so king h2 knight back at least you sh should have tried to maybe put the knight on d6 but then you probably realized well he can take and the communication with the queen and the rook is not as good because after it takes he takes with check so that's the big problem so unfortunately your position is not very good knight b6 bishop f5 and total domination compare every single piece compare the rooks compare the queens bishop versus knight very bad position so you try to play king f7 but it only makes matters worse queen h8 is an excellent move and now you have to bail out into this end game this is a good idea you drop a pawn but at the at the same time you get to activate your pieces so rook f7 g3 knight back he correctly doesn't take the knight i think rook and pawn endgame has good drawish potential for black so he goes here takes takes knight back so your goal here is to trade these two pawns for these two pawns if that's the case rush the king quickly to the other side and try to make a draw so that's exactly what happens little by little black's making progress finally achieve your goal now the question is can you make the draw unfortunately the game 
abruptly ends here and maybe your opponent ran out of time it's not obvious to me but the only thing i can say is that after bishop c4 you still have a long way to make a draw by the way this square is the same color so it's not as simple as it looks going king f8 would be bad because of this check so if you can get the king over to the king queen side somehow you're fine if not he's simply gonna start pushing the pawns and eventually create a passer notice how the bishop does a good job restricting this knight not an easy game to save but i think you are very close so in conclusion i want to say be careful about pawn moves in front of your king that move g5 could have cost you a game against a stronger player luckily your opponent played a little too slow you managed to consolidate great trades got the beautiful outpost but then i think you got a little too ambitious and played for a win when you shouldn't have well good luck in the future i want to see more of your games this was grandmaster eugene perlstein for askgm.com